Hey, you guys, welcome. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Mary Satrakian. I'm a master voice teacher here in New York City. Welcome to my studio here. <laughs> and welcome to my first Wednesday in April. I'm going to be here all four Wednesdays in April talking about my new book, which is called Sing, Find Your True Voice. Yes, I've been a master voice teacher now for, gosh, well, I've been in New York for about 40 years. And for 20 of those years, I've been on Broadway, traveling the world with tours like Les Mis, uh, Evita, Phantom of the Opera, Hello, Dolly. And now the last 20 years, I've been in concert, but mostly being a master voice teacher uh, internationally here in the US, in Italy, Portugal, Russia, Armenia, Australia, and I'm just so excited to be back here with you guys. And this Wednesday series is going to be all about just some Q&A regarding my book, um, also doing exercises. So whether you have the book or not, please come on by because we're going to be doing exercises. And if you subscribe, you can also join the chat. So hi, people are, are joining in. Please let me know where you're signing in from. Um, I'm just so happy to be here again. You know, I did my 2020 quarantine voice lessons here and they're still on my YouTube channel page. So you can always go back and, and enjoy them. I did my Monday series last year. Uh, so you can go join that. But now the Wednesday series is going to be a little more particular, meaning I'm going to be going directly into my book stuff, which is just so cool. Hey, from California, Chicane, you're here. Hi, honey. Wonderful. You know, and Roseanne, you're back. Hi. Ah, oh, from the Netherlands. I'm so thrilled you're back, honey. Thank you for joining in. Um, I'm doing really well. Yeah, doing really well. My, my book, um, was officially launched on Valentine's Day this year. And it's just been an 18 year journey getting to there. So woo, it's like birthing a baby, I guess. I don't know. I've never birthed a baby, but I think it's very much like, you know, you, you just this sort of, I want to say bone exhaustion happened right after, but now I'm just, I'm just in the joy. I'm just feeling so happy and getting so many wonderful responses from you guys and just can't wait to continue to share the work. This is work that changed my life. So I'm just so happy to be sharing it with you in hopes that it can help you and your voice. I always think of the voice as a spiritual communications channel. And, um, and we all have it and we all deserve it. Whether you're a professional singer, which is great. I, I, these are tools that I use with my professional singers every day. But the cool news is it goes for the, you guys, too, who sing in the shower or want to sing on pitch better, want to carry a tune or want to do a community show or want to join a choir. This is to get us all to the next level, level no matter what level you are at. Hello, Emma Fox. Oh, my gosh. Also in the Netherlands. Oh, honey. Great. So good to see you here. Thank you. It feels like old friends coming back, even though I've never met you in person, not yet. Last November 15, um, I had my big masterclass here in New York, uh, announcing the book and many of the Satrakinators, you guys who joined a fan club that you organized a fan club. Um, uh, so many of you were there and I got to hug you in person. It was so much fun. So much fun. Hey, Michigan. How are you doing? Good to see you. Moon, moonlight glow. Wonderful. So, um, let's see as people are trickling in, let's get started in that. I wanted to tell you a little bit regarding the book, how it came into existence starting 18 years ago. Um, first of all, their stories, uh, not all, it's not only a singing guide, which has 10 elements. Um, and here's the sheet that I use, 10 elements of voice technique, uh, five elements of voice technique and five elements of the emotional life, which mean 10, and it's called the revolutionary sin. And these elements, I always say in the book, write down all the elements on a piece of paper as you go through the book. And then you can you know, come back to them and remember if you're a note taker, great time to take notes. So what happened to me 
is I went to college, Stanford University. I got a BA in music, I had wonderful teachers. Uh, then I went directly to grad school at the New England Conservatory, um, graduated there, went to Tanglewood one summer, which is an incredible musical festival, classical, studied with the great Phyllis Curtin, then moved to New York to, to pursue my Broadway dream and was studying with Joan Heller, which was a, who was a protege of, of Phyllis Curtin. And the incredible thing is my technique got so good. I really had a great technique. And I was able to book some off-Broadway light opera shows, but I wasn't able to book those Broadway shows, not until I met my master and mentor, acting teacher, Susan Batson, who gave me what we would call the emotional life. These are also acting tools that completely changed my work and, can cha and changed my life to connect into the true emotions of you, of yourself, of myself, which I was kind of keeping at bay, not on purpose, but that's, that's what was happening to me. So when I found a way to connect the two, after a lot of study, um, I started booking those, those Broadway tours and jobs like Hello, Dolly and Les Miserables and Phantom of the Opera playing Madame Giry. So um, it's quite magical and I call it the revolutionary send, as I said, and, and these, these elements, when you put them together, wow, it, um, it is revolutionary. It's, it's, they're not elements that are brand new. It's kind of how I've organized them so that you can get to your work very quickly and economically. So, um, so Emma, one day, yep, Emma, one day we, we will definitely get a hug in, in person and sing together. I can't wait. Um, you've spent a lot of time at Stanford. That's fantastic. Isn't it a beautiful ca campus? I grew up in California, in Northern California. So, um, and actually I come from kind of a Stanford family. I have, I have my, both of my parents, they met there. Uh, I had a grand grandmother that went there, which was very unusual in the old days to have women. Um, there weren't a lot of women that went to Stanford. Um, now there are, and uh, yay women. And uh, my two older brothers went to Stanford. So um, it's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, and then New England Conservatory was just a, a great first city to live in. That was in Boston. And then I got to move to New York. So um, it's really, really something. Juan Luis, ah, hello, one of my favorite singers in the world. Uh, so cool to see you here, honey. Thank you so much for your presence. And listen, I know you got the book. So if there's any question or anything you want to point out, please put it into the comments. I want to get right to some, some questions that I, that I got on my YouTube channel and, uh, and one on Instagram. You can always send me messages on Instagram. I'm even happen, happy to see videos of you singing if you want me to give you feedback. I'm really, really happy to do that. I, I have... I'm not overwhelmed now with too many. So when, if and when that comes, I will let you know. But really, I'm, I'm here to serve. I, I really appreciate you and your support on the book. And I want to be here to help with those questions. So, um, so let's get to it. Yeah. Awesome. Just looking to see if there's any questions here. I, I love if you're new, please subscribe. And I'm happy to hear any questions you might have. And chat. Now, let's all make sure we've got our water nearby. We're going to be doing some, some singing now. So be sure to stay hydrated. And maybe get some water with electrolytes. That's really good, too. That keeps you hydrated. Sometimes just water, you need the electrolytes. So that's really good as well. Okay. So I'm going to just tell you what the questions are first, because it will give us how we proceed to answer those questions. The first question, I hope Dan is here, is from Dan. Um, in the first three elements of the voice technique side, we've got the breath, support, and resonance. These three elements, the breath, support, and resonance are really also about talking. I say that singing is born out of speaking. So we've got to get our speaking in really good form. And Dan told me that he understood from reading the book, he really got the, the breath and the support, which is which is fantastic, because here's some pictures from the book. There's some ideas about the support, which we're going to go through. Uh, these pictures are by Christopher Gunn. They're really, really magical. We worked together 
on these pictures. And it's just been so, it's so delightful to have a visual that you can use. So you can see here on page 34, and if you have your book, get it out. Page 34, you can see all the pictures that go through the breath. There's the lungs. We, we breathe at the bottom of the lungs, the diaphragm. The diaphragm contracts down because of the phrenic nerve and it contracts down, it creates this vacuum and our lungs, our lungs fill up with air. So, hey, so Dan understood that and it sounds like he understood the support too. So let's do those together just to make sure we've all got it good. Yay, you're coming on, I'm so glad you're here. Keep on coming, wonderful. All right, so I wanna make sure we can see the torso. So show me where are your lungs, yep, your lungs are here. And now you guys, now that my book is out and that I can share the pictures with you before, this is the first time I'm sharing the pictures like online publicly, um, cause they're in the book now. So they're copywritten and everything else. So this is wonderful. So where are your lungs? Ah, here are the lungs. Yeah, these are the delightful pictures. So if you don't have the book, you can see where we're getting. So here are our lungs. Now, when you sleep at night, we're just holding the breath of the body already uses. We're not, we're not inventing anything new. We're just going with how the body works, which is why this is so magical. I promise you. Oh, hi, Ron. You're here. Oh, I'm so happy to see you again. It's my pleasure, honey. Thank you for being here. Be sure to ask a question if you need to. So when we sleep at night, do we breathe at the top of the lungs or the bottom of the lungs? Yes, you're right. The bottom of the lungs. Now, many of you have an issue of breathing at the top of the lungs, which I call the panic breath. This is the one issue that's very universal, very universal indeed. And it's a little bit crazy because it wreaks havoc like uh, I, it's, it's terrible. One of my amazing students, Andrew, he's a teacher. And last week he, he booked, he posted publicly that using my book, he taught his fourth and fifth graders to breathe, just taking a breath. Half of them were now crying in class, crying, which means that I'm pretty sure my 99%, you know, educated guess is that they were breathing high and what that does is that avoids our emotions. When we breathe as the body wants to breathe, then we are aware of our emotions. And sometimes, you know, it's it's difficult. Like if you're sensitive, you don't want to have conflict, you're going to breathe up here if you want to avoid avoid your emotions. So if they were crying, and Andrew is such a such a dynamic master teacher, he was able to know what to do. He just said to his kids, keep crying, kids. And then they it was a choir, then they sang. And I'll tell you some more about the story when we get to the other elements, but he used all the elements in my book. They had better pitch. They had gorgeous uh, intonation and dynamics. Their phrasing was incredible. And it was the best sound he's ever had out of his chorus. He, he publicly posted that. And what that means is these elements are magical when you put them all together. So anyway, kind of crazy that just taking a breath is so powerful, but you'll see in my book, I write many stories personal stories about the students I've worked with. Some who are famous like Bella Thorne, who I just saw this last weekend, we were working together um, on a new song and her breath is, you know, totally in place now before she couldn't even breathe. And there's a story about that in the book. So come on by. So now here's our lungs. We're going to breathe at the bottom of the lungs. Where is that famous diaphragm? Here it is. Okay, they always talk about the diaphragm, the breathing muscle, but what does that mean? Nobody explains what it means. Okay, so we have these two balloons in our body, in our chest, and they need to blow up. And, and they can't do it by themselves. So there's this incredible thing that happens with physics. So there's this muscle, and it's called, my subtractionators know, an involuntary muscle. It's just like the heart. It can't move with our intention. I can't say diaphragm move. I can't say heart beat. It, it does it automatically. So this is really interesting. We have these balloons, they need to blow up. So how does this diaphragm actually really work? Nobody explains it, at least in my, 
experience, nobody explains it. Let's explain it now. And it's really clean and clear in the book. So you can have the book on your shelf. If you forget, you can go back and take a look. All right. So there's something in our neck that nobody tells you about. It's called the phrenic nerve. The body needs to breathe. The phrenic nerve is aware and it sends a signal to the diaphragm. It's literally on either side of the neck, sends a signal to the diaphragm. And the diaphragm, what does it do? It receives the signal, sending the signal. I got it, got the signal. And then what does the diaphragm do? This is what everybody does talk about. The diaphragm then contracts and it drops down. Now, let me be clear. When it contracts, it contracts. It doesn't do this. It actually is shaped kind of like a dome. It's all the way around here under your lungs. And it contracts like a muscle contraction would like bunch up. That's what it does. It bunches and it drops down. In doing so, it re it it pushes aside these organs. So we have to be ready to release our tummy for this to go down and release. This is the thing that I didn't get till after I had a master's in the knowing conservatory. I didn't quite understand. I was always trying to get air down here because my teacher said, breathe here. So I was trying to push air there. There's no air there. The air is where the lungs really are. And then with our thought, we think down because the diaphragm's dropping down. So we inhale down, down, and then we release the tummy. That's it. Now, don't take a huge breath, you guys. Now, if you are holding really tight and it's hard to breathe, you might even have to say push a little bit. I write a story about Billy Elliot and the young boys who are dancers. You guys who are dancers, you're trained to hold this tight. And I tell the story so you can go back and look at the story about James and Billy Elliot who was holding so tight. So I had him push because he was on what I call dancer channel. We have to change now to singer, actor, human being channel. So we're going to real breath, not holding the belly in, but surrendering. So we choreographed moments where he could surrender this. So do it with me now. Let's surrender. Yeah, beautiful. Now, for some of you, it's just, just take an easy breath. That's it. That's it. Easy as that. We don't want to go tank up as much as you can. No, don't worry about that. That's too much. It's not even, it's not necessary. Okay. Can you talk about a support for, for the low notes? Absolutely, Ron. We're getting to support next. So this is great timing. Okay. So just to say, we drop down, it creates a vacuum. And that's why air automatically goes into your lungs. So without our phrenic nerve working to send the signal for that to contract, for the air to rush in, we wouldn't be able to breathe. But that's why we can breathe. So here we are. Okay, now let's get to Ron's question about support. Now, the support chapter is really important. And everything I'm saying now, I say it in the book as well. But I'm really particular in the book. I really like every sentence is very particular, very economical. I'm not blabbing, blabbing, blabbing about nothing. We're really getting down to the nitty gritty. So that's why the book is so great to have. And I'm sorry to be selling it, but it's really about just having the information on your shelf. This is the hard copy, which I love because it's just like I, you can write in the, if you want to take notes and write in the margins, you can do that. There's space. And you can always go back to this. Because as we grow and change, our, our perception of everything grows and changes. So it's always good to back, go back to the elements, which I do every day. Every time I'm teaching you guys, it's a lesson for me too, to remember. So it's really good. I get this free voice lesson. Okay. <laughs> so, hey, Delia. Hi, honey. You're here. This is wonderful. Oh, my goodness. I'm so happy. Okay. That you guys are joining me. Really, it's been so long. So I'm so thrilled. Okay. So we've taken our breath. So the next element is regarding the exhale. The breath is just the inhale. Now the support is going to be connected with the exhale. So let's think about support for a minute. I'm in New York City. My apartment's on the 16th floor. Where would the support of my building be? That's right, in the foundation. So we know if we put the support up here on the 16th floor, I wouldn't be talking to you now. We would be crashed over. 
So we've got our lungs, we're the building right now. We've got our diaphragm. It makes sense that we don't wanna put the support up here, that's gonna jam. We're gonna go under that. So what do I call it? I call it belly button, right Juan Luis? Yes, belly button. I call it super belly button. And it's a superhero. So this is something that I want you to remember, Ron, that the support, whether you're singing low notes or high notes, this is where the support initiated, initiates. Or also, I'm speaking to you right now. Where it initiates is from here. So here's our super amazing belly button. I'm powerful and vulnerable. The, the, the support is about power, about protecting your vocal cords, and it also connects to your vulnerability, okay? Yes, Lynn, you're here. Hi, honey, no worries. Support help is exactly what you need. Then you're right on time and you know the, you already know the breath, which is great. Oh, thank you, you adore the book and thank you for your five-star review, honey. I'm so honored. It's just so exciting to share the information. I just, you know, it really is. Okay, so what are we going to do then? How are we gonna initiate the support? Mary, you said belly button, but, but what do I do? Okay, so what we do is we take an inhale. Now the belly button's here. I'm gonna think belly button maybe an inch below, like right here, okay? So this is where my little tummy fat is. <laughs> so some of us have that. That's okay. It doesn't, it's, it's fine. It's part of our instrument. And I even talk about that for a minute in the book too, which you'll see about being, having a little extra fat here. It's not necessarily bad. Okay, so we're going to do an S and swing the belly button in like this. We take the inhale, swing it in. Now notice my sternum is popping out. That's fantastic. It means I don't have tension here. So what we're honing, this is really important to understand. This isn't just, you know, belly dancing. We are honing the same action the body uses when we sneeze, uh, chew, or when we cough, <laughs> or when we laugh, ha 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 Let's laugh together. <laughs> so what you can do is start getting aware, like I have a sneeze coming on, put your hand on your belly button, achoo! and you'll actually feel this action that we're honing to use for our craft. Why does the body do this? It's protecting the vocal cords from hitting each other, from getting damaged, it's making our body very, very healthy and useful, okay? Yes, I'm gonna talk about resonance next. That's what we're getting to. I promise, I promise. Uh, excellent question. I'm gonna read it right after Moonlight, okay? <clears throat> All right, now this is a domino effect. Really understand this Moonlight Glow. If you don't have the correct breath, if you don't have the correct support, you cannot do the rest. You cannot speak correctly. You cannot sing high notes correctly. You'll, you'll be able to manage and maybe muscle it, but you'll get exhausted. So this is why I always put it in this order. Since this is Wednesday number one, I'm going very slowly through it. Next Wednesday, we'll go a little faster. But isn't it fun to review it? I hope so. I hope it's fun. Okay. So this is the same action. It's also great to understand when you read the book, you'll hear these words again that I'm talking and you'll hopefully... Remember this again. So let's do the S. S, S, S. Good. So it's like a swing. Here's a picture of the swing that's in my book. Yes. So think of it swinging in. Why? This is the reason why. When we inhale, the diaphragm's contracting, it's dropping down. We're just inhaling. Now, when we exhale, we're working. The diaphragm's relaxing, going back up, and we're following it as a swing. We're working with these lower abs and sending. It's also like um, two balls spinning around each other. Brrr, moving in. Let me show you the picture. When I say two balls spinning around each other, this picture is by Emily Autumn. I any of you who love basketball, here's a referee and the hand over hand motion for the for the for travel when that when they have the you know, the referee's calling travel like they make a mistake. <laughs> I'm forgetting my basketball. So it's like this hand over hand. This is the energy 
of the support moving in. Do a tongue trill or a lip trill. Notice I'm not saying hold. Notice I'm not saying core. Don't, I'm not saying use your core muscles. I'm not saying that. I am saying belly button swinging in like um, two balls spinning around each other or like a referee calling travel. Brrr, try that together. Brrr, brrr. And if you can't do the tongue or the lip trill, it probably means you're not quite in the energy of this moving in. So do an S. S now you can see here's the here are the two balls spinning around each other. And here is the sternum popping out. It's so fun to share these pictures with you finally. Isn't that fun? The organs have characters. So there's the, the, the sternum bone has a character. Yeah. So if you can do this without me, and I want you to do this every morning, do this every morning, do this with your choir, Munglo. This is so important for your choir to first do the S, and then I promise we'll do the resonance right after. So if I'm getting ready in the morning, I'm fixing my hair, I'm going to brush my teeth, I'll put on my makeup, I'm going to do the S first. Oh, I see my sternum popping out. Then I know I'm connected. Don't worry about it after that. You've got it? Great. And if you're waiting by the elevator or you're sitting on the bus, you can kind of check. If you're in New York City when the subway goes by or if you're sitting in your car, you can always kind of check in. This is 24-7. This is the way that our body breathes and the way our body supports 24-7. We don't always do it. Why? Well, we have stress. We breathe up here. We get scared and we, we scream from our throat. It's a habit. There are many habits that we have. Um, so this is where we're always coming back to this home base. Okay, good. Now we get to Dan's question, Moonglow's question, Ron's question. This is great. A lot of questions about resonance now. Okay, so we're hooking up the breath, the inhale, and now the exhale, we're going to connect that to our resonance. Let's see. Literally just purchased your book two seconds ago. Oh, thank you, Doug. You're so sweet. Thank you, honey. I'm so thrilled to hear that. that oh, it means so much to me. I'm just thrilled. Okay, so let's do this together. Let's, uh, I'm going to go through the whole thing of what this is. We have vocal cords in our throat. It's true. Without vocal cords, we can't speak or sing. So anybody with vocal cords, you even if you're deaf, you can speak and you can sing. Absolutely, because you have vocal cords. Now, why would I tell you not to think about your throat while singing? I'm gonna say to you, do not think about your throat. There's a reason and it's a quantum theory. So it's not just because it's, it's a, Smoke and daggers. It's actually a real thing. Oh, here. Hey, Ron, you can go on. Um, he wants to know how to order the book. You can go to Amazon worldwide. So if you're in the U.S., just go to Amazon.com and you punch in sing, find your true voice. And I come up. Uh, my name is Mary Satrakian. You can always put in that and you'll see the book again. And sorry, just a little pause here because Ron had the question. So there's the hard copy. There's also a paperback. I ran out of my paperback. So this is the proof. So it has a big line. But you can see the paperback is really great if you want to travel with it because it's super light. Those of you who love Kindle, if you want the hard copy, I would say that's for your shelf at home. Like, I want to go back to it. That's what I, that's what I do with my books. There's also the Kindle. So those of you who love to scroll and do Kindle, perfect. And I'm really proud to say I have an audiobook. Um, I spent so much time on my audiobook. I'm narrating it. I'm singing with you. It's like a voice lesson with me in your back pocket. And um, it's so much fun. So, uh, and I made sure the sound is great. So you you know those audiobooks that the sound isn't good. This is like amazing sound. So you'll be in the same room with me and uh, we'll be singing together, going through the exercises together, which is really, really fun. Oh, thank you, Ron. I know this has been a long time. Okay, so here we go. We know very well we don't want to sing in our throat because this is the quantum theory. 
it says that if you focus on a molecule, the state of that molecule changes. So we're not going to think about physically what's going on in the vocal cords. It's interesting to learn about that. I didn't learn about it until I went to my master's, which was really appropriate. You guys don't have to get all involved in like, you can read it and understand it and move on. Don't get all involved in the anatomy. Like I better know how everything works. Okay. It's very interesting as a study, but make that your masters. Don't, don't make it like, if I don't understand how the vocal cords work, I can't sing. That's not true. Just understand there is a quantum theory that says if you focus on a molecule, that molecule changes its state. So that's why we're not going to focus on the throat. It's kind of like the vocal cords are also involuntary. I'm not telling my vocal cords to move. And if I start thinking about it, this is what happens to my voice. I start clenching. It starts going crazy. It's, it feels horrible. And that's when they can start getting damaged and tired. So we're not going to put our energy there. What are we going to do instead? We're going to focus on where our voice is vibrating. Now, it can vibrate in many places. It can vibrate in the head. It can vibrate in the throat. It can vibrate in the chest. Sure, there are many places it can vibrate. Where I want you to focus on vibration is what I call the front passage. So here in our face... Basically here, put your hand like this. You can feel it here. Notice I'm not saying back here. It's not behind your ear. It's in front of your ear here. This is what I call the dominant resonator. Now, you're, even as I'm talking about this, there's other vibrations coming in other places. But we're making it simple. We don't have to, we don't have to think about everything. We're focusing here. Now, for speaking... We're going to focus around our mouth and our cheeks. So we do the S. Now, all I want you to focus on is sensation of vibration. Mm. And you're going to chew a little bit. I'm going to move my light because I'm afraid the video is going weird. Okay. Mm. Oh, gosh. Now I just turned it off. There we go. Mm. Now, I really want you to respond. Do you feel vibration here? The S. Same action. Mm. How does the support feel, Lynn? Are you getting the support? This initiation, this happens with every utterance, whether we are whispering, yelling, hey, whether we are, this is what protects our voice and is connecting to our, our resonance. So it's breath here, right to here. Mmm. Yeah. Now let me know. What are you aware of? Do you guys feel that resonance? Yeah. So I'm just waiting for your, for your, cause it, there's a little delay. So what dear Dan was saying to me, Mary, I feel the resonance, but then how do I sing? Which is really interesting. So all we're doing is using this as a tool she came said it gave her hiccups. Okay, this is interesting. You got hiccups, huh, sweetie? <laughs> so what you do for hiccups is you take a glass of water like this and you put your, your lip on the other side, on this side, and you're going to go upside down and drink water like this. Drink the whole glass of water and your hiccups will go. Now what that's telling me I'm not an expert on hiccups, but what that's telling me is that you haven't been quite connected to your breath and support. So now you're getting a, a new connection and the old muscle memory is like, but wait, you came, we used to breathe like this and now you're doing that and whoop, hiccup. So feel good about yourself. Don't worry. But this, this friend of my, of the family taught me this when I was a little girl, because you have hiccups. Do this. You put the glass, you put over it, and you drink the water upside down. Works every time. It's it's kind of a miracle. I'm moving the light back now because I'm not liking it. Okay. All right. So here we are. What we're going to do is this exercise in the book. 
So in the very, once you read the whole book at the very end, I put all the exercises together. Here are the revolutionary send um, elements. And then, so you don't have to go through the whole book and remember the exercises. All you have to do is go to the end and then you can do the exercises we did in the book. Now you might have other exercises you like to do that I didn't talk about, but these are the ones we work on. Oh, good, Emma, Emma it's, it's an international way to get rid of hiccups, right, Emma? So yeah, <laughs> okay. So now you can notice that we're doing the S, we're doing the, we're doing all the, now we're, now we're at resonance. So this is a really great exercise we're gonna do now, especially for Dan and also for you, Moonglo. And you can see how the hands are on the cheeks and the belly button connects to every staccato note. So let's do this together. Take your hands here. Do an S. Now it's new breath. Going to move the belly button in. And your hands are going to go away from your cheeks like this. Me. As you say me. Now we're going to say the next vowel, ma. Here we go. Ma. Good. Now mo, S. Same action as you inhale. Mo. Mo. And you're speaking it here. I'm using your hands here so you're aware of your cheeks. Moonlight, you said your resonance mainly in the nose, not around the cheekbones. So what you want to do is widen it now. If you only go here, you might get a little nasal down low. Now, you might be somebody that that's just where you feel it. Maybe you don't feel it any other place. But I have to tell you, I wrote about James Gandolfini, the big star of Sopranos, the show Sopranos. He was so darling, I, uh, the late, great James Gandolfini. And he kind of had a resonance, like you're talking about, Moonglow, very nasal. We widened the resonance to his cheeks, and this exercise will help you. So let's say mo again, mo. So rather than mo, mo. Now we're going to go mi, me, ma, mo. Now I'll do mu, s, s, breath, mu. Now, just say all the vowels together without your hands. Mi me ma mo mu. Mi me ma mo mu. Do one with your hands. Mi me ma mo mu. Zi ze za zo zu. Let's try that. Zi ze za zo zu. So it's a little bit more resonance here, not just here, and definitely not in your throat. You know, good old vocal fry. So many people that I'm watching on TV are speaking here. Or they talk here and then they come back down and they say, what am I doing? Even, uh, even some of the, uh, the commentators um, on MSNBC, I heard one the other night, she's talking here. It's like, hello, how are you doing? And, and it makes you so tired and it also, it's just not healthy. And also we, it's, it's suppressing your emotions. So you're trying to protect your emotions, but it's not going to help you. Okay. How did that feel, Munglo, when you used more here? Now for Dan, if Dan, if you're listening, let's do this again. Now let's add pitch to that. Now we're just adding pitch and we're singing. It's that simple. Me. Good. Me. Here we go. Me. Me, me, ma. Me. Me. Ma. Good. Me, me, ma, mo, mu. See how this is bouncing each time? Me. Me. Ma. Mo. Move because it's staccato. I can reattack it. Try that with your hands. Me, me, ma, mo, mu. Now, if you feel, I only feel vibration on my lips. I don't feel it in my cheeks, and that's what I wanted to say to Dan. He said, "But I don't feel it." And it's like some of you. That's why I'm always like, "What are you aware of?" Because some people feel it, and some people don't. For me, I feel it around my mouth. Me, me, ma. And I feel a little my nose too, Munglo. But I know that this is vibrating a little wider, so I'm getting more of the front passage resonators. It's not just here. That's what mask would indicate, only here. It's using all of this, all of this. So you get even more tone. Let me show you on this. So here's a singing bowl. Now it's so beautiful. I'm just going to ring it. Yeah. 
So it's really, it's really going beautiful. I don't, I can't do it that way. Now, if I put this next to my body, it's dampening the overtones. If I don't have it next to my body and everything is clear, oh, it's got what we'll call overtones ringing. And that's what makes it sound so full. So all of these exercises I'm doing with you are trying to make sure to get as much vibration as we can muster. Now, if you have a tight jaw, if you have a tight tongue, that's like holding the bowl next to my body. Mi, me, ma, mi, me, ma. Let's do legato together. Let's do this note. Men, you're down here. Ladies, we're here. Mi, me, ma. Those are the men. Mi, me, ma. So now we're going to sing to each other. Just send it to me in the camera. S. S. And we're just going to kind of tickle our cheeks. Mi, me, ma. Try that. Mi, me, ma. Now I'm going to reach to you into the camera and say, hi, you guys. Hello. And the belly button's just moving in. That's the support. And we're the reason I'm using M, the magic of M, which I talk about in the book, is that it gets us to that beautiful vibration more forward and in the front passage resonators. These are just low notes. Now, getting back to your question, I th Ron, about using support for low notes, the ball spinning are going to spin slow, more slowly for low notes. Mi, me, ma. The pressure is kind of like molasses or honey. Mi. Now, if I was singing higher, mi, mi, ma. this is going to have more energy and the vibration is going to be quicker and it's going to be a fast, the balls are spinning faster. So that's to answer your question there. I hope that helps. We're going to keep doing this exercise. Let me just see your comments here. It felt good. Yay, moonlight. Fantastic. Now, Andrew just joined us. I don't know if you saw Andrew, but I was bragging about you and your kids. It's hard to watch NCIS sometimes now because of the characters, who is amazing, always talks in vocal fry. That's right. I'm with you, Andrew. I... The thing about television is the, the microphone, you know, the guy with the mic is right there. The mic is right here. So they don't have to send their voice. You're a teacher. You have, I'm teaching right now. I am filling this room with my sound. I, par partly because I just, I'm so excited to communicate with you, but I want to make sure that you hear and understand me. And so what happens with the actors is they go, hi, how are you doing? What's happening? And they think that it's kind of, you know, hey, what's the, what's, you know, who's the perpetrator? What's happening? So they, they go to that, what I call cool, you know, they're in their cool voice. Like I'm really cool. And unfortunately the kids are all picking it up and they're all hurting their voices. Um, if you go back a few decades to the earlier actors, they never spoke in this. This is like a, generational accent, you know, it's, and, and I help, let's help change the world with this vocal fry, mostly because it really harms your voice. I was talking to Heather yesterday who works at um, uh, the senior community where my mother was. I tell a wonderful story about my mother who had Alzheimer's and how she could sing, even though she couldn't talk, she could sing on perfect pitch and with every word and sing in harmony with me. It's an incredible, it's the epilogue of my book. It's a really special story, but she um, is reading. She's she has the audio book, and I've never worked with her as a as a singer. She's 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 the exercise and does uh, guru there, and um, so she's always doing exercises with the seniors, and they're all in different levels of their of their health. You know, a lot of them are just healthy and hanging out, and some of them need more help. And as my mother got older, um, she needed to be in the health center. Uh, there. But what she was telling me is a lot of the elderly have trouble speaking. And it's because they didn't learn these techniques. So I'm going to get on Zoom with her, hopefully, and um, do some techniques with the group. Because when you get into these resonators, 
it's, it changes everything just for your speech. So those are uh, kind of fun ones to do. So let's see what, um, sometimes you feel the vibration on your teeth. That's why I use a zize za. The teeth are really helpful. Zize za, mi me ma. I, I think that's cool. If you're feeling it front and there, that's very good. I don't always feel that, but doesn't mean it's wrong. I think that's great. So that's why I'm asking you, what are you aware of? Because everybody feels it differently. So feel free to do a little, you know, where do you feel it, Juan Luis? I mean, you're, you're so advanced, but isn't it fun to kind of go back to the beginning, to the particulars? Okay, Ron, can one over support by clenching too hard on the abs? Yes. So what happens is the word that you're using there is clench. We, we never want to clench. We want to send. That's why I call my method the revolutionary send. It's not the revolutionary emotions. It's not the revolutionary clutch. It's the send. So that's why I love the image of the two balls spinning of the pressure. So to your point, Ron, about lower notes, we need longer pressure. Let's try this note. Ladies, we're down here. Let's try this note. Let's send it. It's a slow vibration. Um, for the highest notes, we're going to do that next because that's the question for from Luis, is that we have more support, but it's not clenching. And by the way, if I use my high note support for the low notes, it doesn't work. It's physics. We're actually setting up the physics of the body. If I go me, me and do that fast one for the high note, if I use that same energy of the support for the low note, it, it hurts and it won't sound. So I hope that answers your question. Does that make sense? So uh, let, let me know, Ron, if that makes sense about the over support. So Juan Luis, I love you. You actually haven't done these in a while and you always feel an ab workout with the breathing. And you laugh. I, I love it. And I always think of my cat purring with the resonance. Ooh, I love that. Your cat purring. I've never thought of that one. That's great. Now, Juan is an experienced singer. And what's interesting is I write a story uh, about Amy, who was a rockette. And she was clenching, to your point, Ron, because dancers are taught to hold an and, you know, basically hold everything and clench and bring it in and hold tight. Now, all we're doing is change. I'm not saying you can't do that for your dancer. I'm not trying to change your dancing or change that. We're going to change the channel and now go to singer, actor, human being channel, which I did with Amy. And I tell the story and we did the S's. And to, to Juan Luis's point is she sat up and she goes, oh, my God, Mary. I am so tired here. My muscles are so tired. It's like, well, you are an athlete. And now you're isolating these. We're not clenching, we're sending, but it, 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 is, a, it is a workout. It's its own workout. So thank you for sharing that, Juan Luis. I love it. And thank you, Amy. She let me put her story in. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a great story. I think it's in the support chapter. I talk about you guys confusing phrases because we all hear a lot about, you know, singing and a lot of people use certain phrases and they're confusing. So I go through every phrase and I tell you why it works or when it would work for whom it works. This is not cookie cutter stuff. This is, we're all trying to get to the same thing, but we all have different issues. Like Ron says, Oh God, Dan says, I can't feel anything. What do I do? I say, if you, if you feel a little buzz here for a minute, mm, then trust and you've got it. See, so he said, but there's no humming in my songs. How do I know if I'm right? You have to trust and go. 
And also you can send me a video and I can double check. I'm really happy to. Hi, Joy. You got the hardcover, Joy. Oh, my favorite. Thank you, honey. When slowing down that energy to sustain that vibration, are we thinking any differently in airflow? No, I don't want you to think about airflow. Please don't think about airflow. Think about your belly button moving in. Think about the ball spinning. As we go higher, the balls will spin faster. Please, it's just one thing you don't have to think about. How cool is that? I don't understand why teachers say, think about your airflow and it's, no. I hope that helps. So instead, we're going to use the emotional life tools, which we'll do right now. We'll use the emotional life tools that help us with the sending. So you don't have to think about airflow. Airflow puts us in our, in, in our head and then we get, everything gets jammed. It's, it's because if we think about airflow, then you're not, you're not in the story. You're thinking about airflow. It's, it's not, it's something that I don't, I don't like to think about. I feel like we have other tools that take care of that is my point. Okay. So let's go to the other tools, which we'll do next. A voice teacher who sang with the NYC opera used to word, word clenching in relation to support. And I couldn't breathe after three notes, drop those lessons after three sessions. Ron, I'm with you. Now I want to tell you, I've only studied with opera singers. I've only studied, I'm going to move my thing up here again. I've only studied with amazing opera singers. Those being Phyllis Curtin, those being Mark Pearson, and then my favorite of all time, Joan Heller, and none of them use the word clench. So just I just say that because I don't want anybody to say, well, I study with opera teachers, so it's different. It's not different. What's unfortunate, in my opinion, is that there are these words and instructions out there that aren't good for everybody. Some of them, once in a while, it might work for somebody. Like somebody who, who's just here and doesn't have anything. Or, and I say this in the book, I have a whole really fun picture of an opera singer who's quite heavy. And the question is, if you're fat, would you sing better? Now, of course, the fat doesn't help your vocal cords. It doesn't help your resonance. It doesn't help anything. But with support, and maybe you can tell me, Ron, if this if this opera singer teacher was overweight, which is not judging anything. But what happens is you if you have extra fat and you clench, you can't clench. You can't actually clench because of the fat. So if you're like, say, clench it in and you're sending, it would be it, you, it might actually work. So, but for those of us who aren't, don't have a lot of extra fat, if you clench, which I'm sure is you, Ron, it will, it, it jams you. So either way, I don't use the word clench. But again, the, the one thing that, because the fat is integrated with the, with the muscle, um, or it's a, it's, a, it's a layer of fat, it's going to be impossible to clench your muscles. So being overweight, it could, that word could work, but let's just leave the word out and call it send and call and call it swing it in, scoop it in, keep moving it in the balls swing, the um, swing around each other, the balls spin. That's the word, <laughs> the balls spin around each other. Okay. Well, this is fun getting it clear. These are really great questions. Okay. So, um, good joy. We're going to, we're going to do it, put it on its feet with the, with the other elements of the revolutionary send that will help this idea of airflow. You don't have, what you want to do, honey, is we're going to use fourth wall personalization, and we're going to send to our person. That will be your airflow. You don't have to think about that word any longer. Isn't that fun? We get to kind of push away leave out the words that don't work, and then we get honed into the economical craft so that you become the vessel. That's what I want. I want you guys to be the vessel of your beautiful voice and sound like you. Okay, here's birds and moons. Okay, Roger, hi. 
Do we want to think about the mouth shape vowels? Okay, good question. And is the resonator as a male for singing high and low tones? No chest voice. Okay, I love this. Okay, the first things first, vowels. Now, yes, there are positions for vowels. I, I don't go into that hugely because I don't want you to get locked in a position. But what I love to say and what I do talk about for the E vowel, for example, our tongue is up in the back when we say E. So let's all say E together. Me. Now I'm going to think very vertically and the jaw and the tongue have to be free. So the tip of the tongue is going to be right behind the back of the teeth and surrender. That's the one time I use the word relax. You can relax the tongue. Any other time? No. We are an athlete. We're engaged. We're released. Not relaxed. This is not about being relaxed. But the tongue, we can actually relax or release. So the E and then the jaw is free. We don't want to connect the jaw with the tone. The jaw swings away from the tone. So let's all say together. Remember, we got the S. S. Now let's say V. You're going to go V. Now, good. Now let's sing on that. V. Good. Now let's say me. Me. So this is very vertical. This is our home base sound. It's, it's you know, if you're doing a character, you might want to say me. How we do in CCC. But this is just to get as much overtones. I'm working on overtones for your resonance. So me. So now let's do all vowels and we'll show, I'll show you the positions that they talk about. So meh, it's just going to be vertical again. Me, meh. So notice everything's vertical, not me, meh, me. And you can move your jaw like I'm doing side to side. We do this in the book exercises. I call it like chewing like a cow. <laughs> Why? If you're moving your jaw, you can't clench your jaw. A lot of us clench the jaw. Why would you do that? Because you can hear it, your voice in your head. Me, me. I can hear my voice in my head and it sounds good. <laughs> Out here, I know it sounds really bad. Uh, and by the way, you're not going to hear your voice. Oh, I should have said that earlier. Get a, a recorder playing. You're going to maybe feel vibration, but you're going to hear less voice. Right, Juan Luis? If you're doing it right, you're going to hear less. Me, me, ma. So again, ma, the tongue is changing just by saying it. Now, we don't want to open the throat. Notice I'm not saying, say, ma. Many teachers say to open the throat. Now, again, this is not cookie cutter. There have been times when I've told a student to open their throat. Why? Because their throat was so tight and most often it's because of some kind of abuse. Maybe not always, but just kind of put a little tag in that, that it could be from some kind of verbal or emotional abuse. So they've held their throat really tight and I'll say open so they get to natural. So if they're here, I say open so they go me, me. Now, if you don't have that issue, you don't have a tight, jammed throat, you're already natural. If a teacher tells you to open your throat, you're going to get extra dissipation. Me, mama. That kind of happened to me. I didn't have it that severely, but I was singing with more open. So here's the difference, if you can hear it. Va that's opening. Now, if I don't open the throat and I'm more like the back of the throat's more just natural, not open, just kind of, I'll, I'll call it naturally closed. I do, obviously, I don't want you to put tension, but it's not opening the window. It's just closing the window. Ah, ah, here's open. Ah, here's, here's natural closed. Ah, so you choose which one's better. I like the one where it's just tone, beautiful tone. So let me get to the second part of your question. So me, me, ma. So ma, 
It's just vertical, not opening the throat, just easy ah, jaw swings away. Ma, ma. You can put the O around that ah vowel. Oh. Now, what I'd like to say that those of us who don't want to open too much, like if you open too much, you don't like that. I like to say, let's go through the E channel. So you've got me, and you're going to kind of keep that sensation. On the E vowel, we can feel more vibration. A vowel, we can't feel that vibration. So I love using the E. Now, men, you might be different. Some people do feel more on the A, and I find it's true with men. Not all the men. I work with Michael Bolton. He's like me. We feel more vibration on the E vowel. He's really fun to work with because he's this great pop singer, but he's sung with Pavarotti. So we sometimes organize those vowels so they're more pure. In pop, you might have vowels that are more kind of spoken vowels, a little bit more relaxed. But in opera and classical, they're very pure. And even so in pop, it's important to learn the pure vowel. So ma, mi, me, ma, ma, mu. Let's try that together. So just tell me through the camera. S, s, release. Mi, me, ma, ma, mu. To me, the most important thing is the vertical. I don't want wide. Mi, me, ma, mo, mu. Mi, move the jaw, me, ma, mo, mu. All living here in the front passage. Now, I don't necessarily feel vibration, but I'm, I'm using my mind to just be aware that the vowels live around this floor. Everything's buzzing around here. I might not feel it all, but that's where I'm going. Me, mama. Okay. So that's uh, the first part of the question. Now, the second part is regarding um, Roger's question about, this is more advanced. Is the resonation and for a male singing high and low notes is the resonator. So for men, we're going to go up the scale now which is going up what I call the floors of the front passage. Now we've been singing here. If I go up the scale, now it's, that's, you know, my opera it doesn't have to be opera. It could also be, I'm going up and down the floors of the front passage. I'm just guiding it straight up and down. Again, this is your home base dominant resonator. Now, regarding the chest, men, don't worry about your chest. I would call it heavier. Like if you sing a high note that not doesn't go to falsetto, you might bring up more, we'll call weight. But the fact is, is you guys, your, your sound does not change when you sing in your chest. For a woman, it does. It's a hormonal thing. So if I'm singing in my front passage as a woman, now I'm only going to resonate my chest. I'm going to go away from the dominant resonator. And this is just chest resonator. This is only for the gals. What good is sitting alone in your room? Or I choose to resonate here. What good is sitting alone in your room? Now I'm using my dominant resonator. Men, because your sound doesn't change, you heard a big change in my voice. It's Liza Minnelli to Audra McDonald. You know what I mean? It's two different places. Guys, because of testosterone and such, if you were to do that same exercise, it would be the same sound. It doesn't change. So to make it easy, Ron, don't worry. Just focus on your front for men. Just focus on your front passage resonator and we're going to do high notes next. We're going over an hour right now, but I love you guys so much and I have time today. We'll make this a long lesson and you're all pretty, you're all staying with me. It's really wonderful. I'm so excited. Okay. So Roger, how, how are you doing? Let me know, Roger, how you're doing with that, with that. 
Lynn, grad school, they told us to push our ribs out and hold them. Let's go do that question, Lynn. And I talk about this in the confusing phrases. So we've just taken a breath. Now what you're told to do, let's do, let's do it my way, where you're just going to do me, 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 me. Now, when I take a breath, all I'm thinking is here down. I'm thinking about releasing out. I'm not thinking about going sideways, but let's watch my hand. If I take an inhale, oh, my hand does go out. The ribs do go out. This is another thing I would say, do not think about that. You don't have to think about it. It's happening naturally. You don't have to think about it. Now, what the teachers that are saying to hold your ribs out as you can continue singing. So let's try that. Me, me. If I'm trying to hold my ribs out, I'm getting tense here already. So don't do it. So that's another one you don't need to do. Now, just to let you know, if you're in an opera and you've got this really high passage that's really, really long. Let me just think of something here. Um, Oh. It's that O mio babbino caro, but if I stay high, bello, no, I'm still not thinking of holding my ribs out. I'm thinking of following through with the belly button moving in. The ribs will do their thing. If we start adding our thought here and holding them out, we're jammed. Because the fact is, is this has to move. If it's holding, it's not, it's gonna be jammed at some point. So it's cool because it's just one more thing you don't have to think about. We are streamlining. That's what we're doing. This is called streamlining. It's so much fun. Does that help, Lynn? Send worked much, much better. Yippee, Ron, bravo. Very good. Wishing you were somehow here again. It's hard to sing, especially on the words, give me the strength to try. Um, on a high G, where? Is there a way you would approach this word? Okay, Moonlight Glow. Now you're a woman, right? I don't know from your name. Tell me your name, please, to make sure I know you're a woman because men and women would, would approach that differently. Let me go on. Sen seems to feel better in maintaining an overall sense of rhythm as well as resonance. Yeah, send is the deal. It's also going to help us when we connect these. Um, it's the action chapter in my book. It's the final, final chapter of the revolutionary send, it's number 10. And when you're sending to your personal, your personalization, your person on your fourth wall, that's where the magic happens. That's when people who can't carry a tune suddenly sing in pitch, it's just simple magic. Okay, Andrew, I'm so glad you said that. I never really understood head versus chest. Okay, good, good, good. And because Andrew, you, you, know, you work with kids, so just consider them all, um, they don't have to deal with their chest voice. Just consider them all front passage. Uh, you might have a very talented young girl who's a belter, then we can talk about it. But, but please just use this dominant resonator. Don't worry about, you know, you can, as long as they're using their support, it might go there naturally if it's a big phrase. As long as they're in their support sending, it's, it's really good. Let me see what else you say. I understood from muscle difference, blah, blah, from, yeah. Now, th this whole muscle difference stuff, this whole anatomy stuff, it, we get caught up in it. And just remember, honey, when you're studying the voice ana anatomically, it's not voice pedagogy. It's anatomy. It's not how to teach voice. It's how the voice works. If you start teaching to like, think about this moving there, like even the word lift your soft palate, we're gonna do high notes now. Some teachers say lift your soft palate. And I talk about this in the book and the confusing phrases. Okay, your soft palate does lift when you sing a high note. But remember our quantum theory, if we focus on the muscle, focus on the lifting, it's going to change the molecules. It's going to change the state of the molecules. So they won't be free anymore. They'll automatically be jammed. So instead, we're going to focus on these other elements that we're going to do now. 
as we go up the scale, we're going up the floors of the front passage. That's one. And you're going to think about the sensation. Two things happen when we sing a higher note. Now, here's the anatomy. We're going to just understand the anatomy, but we're not going to make it a voice um, element. It's not voice lesson. It's vocal, it's, uh, you know what I mean, anatomy, getting all freaked out. Okay. Our vocal cords get longer and skinnier when we sing a higher note. Also, when we sing a higher note, the cavity up here gets smaller. So I use the image of a pyramid, triangle here or pyramid. So if I do the lip trill exercise and I go up, if I go wider, doesn't sound dissipated, horrible. Now I'm going to use physics. And remember, we need more energy of support. I'm going to just bend my knees into the higher note, belly button down to support. So if I just bend my knees, that's another good one. I'm in physics now. I'm just with my thought. I'm just thinking, oh, it's going to go smaller. That's all. I don't have to do anything. Just know it's going smaller. Now I'm going to try to make it bigger. Doesn't work. Why? It's physics. So we are using physics on our side. We're going to come back to this and, and I'll try to answer your, your message too, Miriam. I see your woman. Perfect. So I'll, I'll make, I'll try to use that as an example as we go forward. Okay. Lynn, I was always out of breath. Yeah. You were out of breath when you're holding your ribs out because you were jammed. So just don't think about it. You're fine. Okay, Roger, thank you. That makes sense because I feel in control of my voice when it's focused in the home base. Wow, I have difficulty translating to actual lyrics. You're an alternate a songwriter. Ooh, I love that. Okay, so regarding home base, my first voice, le voice teacher said, sing out here. I was like, what is that? Sing out here. I didn't understand what that meant. My other voice teacher said, sing around here. I didn't know what that meant. When I learned from Joan Heller about the front passage, some people say, sing in your mask, which isn't wrong at all. If you, if you speak down here, uh, 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 to sing in your mask, to bring it more forward is great. But if you already sing in this front passage, if this is already comfortable for you, Roger, Mmm. If you feel the vibration, you hear my voice, right? My voice isn't down here. My voice isn't back there. My voice isn't up here. My voice is in my front passage resonator. Mmm. It's like I suddenly had control. Not like I'm going to put it there and make it there and, and you expect it here. This is the expectation. Just, I don't love the word placement. Now, again, if you are if you're somebody who has vocal fry, we may very I may very well say place your voice here because you've got to get it out of a very dangerous zone in your throat and now try to place the words in your cheeks and in your mouth. That word may use well, may be used well for that. Now, Roger, as far as I can tell from your questions, you don't have that issue. So, you're going to trust, and this is also answering Dan's question about how do I use this hum while I'm singing? And I think you're asking the same question, Roger. So we're going to sing Happy Birthday, which I use in my book, just because it's a song I know you, you guys all know. So that's why I use it. So this is all around here. Just trust it's living there. And just put the words here. Think of the words living here. Happy birthday to you. Let's all sing that together. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. If that's too low for the men, let's go here. I'll sing it in your men. We're going to do an octave lower. Happy birthday. And you guys are up. That's the note. That's the real note you're singing. Just think of the words living here. See a person you'd love to sing happy birthday to in front of you. I'll use my dad. I always love to sing happy birthday to my dad. You have your belly button support, yeah? Now, 
just trust Dan, who asked me the question, just trust that the words are living here. Now, I love Roger, and thank you for reminding me of your, your name. I love that you sing this indie alternate music because you can just use your lyrics here, let them ring in your, and just kind of let them live. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Now let's make sure we have our breath and support. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. If you don't, if you feel like it's going up here, do an S. S Take another breath as if you're gonna do an S, but sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Done. Now we're gonna go through the high notes next, okay? Because those are the two main questions today, resonance and high notes. Okay, when your voice croaks involuntarily, I think it may be because I'm slipping into my throat. Many men singers I admire sing high, even John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Now, Roger, as you're doing this, this new technique, let's call it new because it's new. It sounds to me like you used to sing more in your throat. So from your, from this question. So let's say you're going to place it here. Now you guys, if your voice cracks, don't worry. That actually is good. Why? Your nervous system and your body has this muscle memory. You already have a mapping in your body that you have made that you sing more here. We're changing that mapping. So you may get a couple notes out that go happy birthday. And then the muscles go, wait, Roger, what are you doing? We don't do that. We do this other thing. And so it jams for a moment. It clutches for a moment. Happy birthday. That's just the muscle telling you that they're, they're, they're changing and, and you, you need to talk to your body. It's so weird, but we have to talk to the brain. We have to talk to the nervous system and tell the mapping, guys, that I don't do that anymore. This is for you too, Lynn. So you, you have to tell your body, don't hold the ribs out. Just let them be. But you have to direct it with your mind. The nervous system is very particular. It's just going to keep doing the regular mapping that you that you already have done. So so be kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Just try to get more and more, um, a higher percentage each time. Now we're going to go into high notes next, okay? So I don't know what your regular range is. You know, John Lennon and Paul McCartney had very, you know, much higher voices. So does Elton John. So it's just to say, where is your home base voice? You know, pick keys that feel comfy wherever they are. In my audio book and in my book, I'm always, you know, I'm always kind of going to middle C or men you'd be here because for most of us, we can sing that, but you might have a different voice. You might need to do there instead of here, you know, and so do it, just do it. It's all good. Okay. Let me go back here. Oh, good. Lynn, the send works better. Excellent. Emma, maybe a bit off top topic, but are you planning to do any more zoom classes or online masterclasses? I'd love to take a face-to-face. -face. Oh, thank you, Emma, for asking. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that right now. So I'm just doing these four Wednesdays in April. Then I go to Italy, and I'll be teaching there. And I'm also meeting with my publisher in Italy. We're translating the book into Italian. So I'm going to be gone for a bit. For those of you who are in New York, though, or if you want to fly into New York, I'm doing a seven-day workshop in person in New York City. Um, uh, let's see. If you go to my website, marysatracking.com, you can get the website. It's it's being hosted by MS Media Music um, Group.com, and uh, I'll put it in the notes here, so you can go and sign up, and you can go and check their check my. I'm also posting it on Instagram a lot. If you go into my Instagram, you can see it there. So you can find me if you're available June 24th through June 30th. It's seven days in a row, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. every day. And John Fisher, my favorite pianist, is going to be with me. 
well, he's been my pianist for 20 years. So that's why I say favorite. I have a lot of favorites, but he's super great. So um, that's one way you can come work with me. I know you're, you're in the Netherlands, so that's not going to be easy, but I'll keep you posted on the Zoom classes. They're not scheduled yet. Okay. Uh, and Ron, thank you, honey, for that too. But so if, if there's any way to get to New York, I'll be here then, but I'll keep you guys posted for sure. Okay. So let's do these. I'm going to get my phantom book because Miriam asked. All right. So this is kind of for you ladies, but, um, she was asking about, uh, the end of um, wishing you were somehow here again. All right, which is, you know, it's a very advanced song. So uh, this might be too soon to be looking at it, but let's, we can, ugh. so where is the page? This is such an old book. I've had this, you know, I was in Phantom touring. Oh, I don't have a page, I don't know. Okay, maybe that's where it is. Anyway. So what happened is uh, Lewis uh, sent me, he was asking me questions about high notes. And he said to me that um, he could sing, you know, in the middle. Uh, he's a songwriter, also uh, like you, Roger. Um, and he said, but the high notes, he's grabbing his throat. And what can he do to change that? And I'm looking for this song. <laughs> Maybe it's not meant for today. Um, so I thought that was interesting. So it's all about support. And I just, okay, let me just find this. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to work on this today. How about we're going to work on that next week, honey. It's just not meant to be. Okay, but we're going to work on high notes. So, so let's work on the high notes. So what that means is if you're, if you're suddenly grabbing your throat for high notes, that means you're not engaging the support. It's also telling me that the old mapping, the muscle memory, when you were singing before he picked up my, my book, because he picked up my book, he's never studied singing in his life. And now he's working with a book, which is so, so cool. And he's a guitarist and he loves to sing. So he sent me, he sent me a, an audio of him singing. Oh my God. Lewis has the most gorgeous voice, so beautiful. Um, but he was right. When he went for the high notes, he was totally grabbing his throat. So this is these are the tools we can use to get out of this old mapping. What that tells me is when he was playing the, the guitar and trying things on his own before understanding what voice technique is, that's how he tried to get the high notes, was squeezing his throat, which does not work. Oh, Miriam, you have the same book. Well, tell me what the page number is, honey, and then I can find it. I can't find my page number. It's not happening. Okay. So what that's telling me is that the support is going out the window and he's clenching here. Also, he might still have his support, but the old mapping is saying, well, we clench our, our throat. Mary's telling you not to, but she's telling you to use the support. But that's what we've always done, so we're still doing it. So what we need to do are some exercises that help us get out of this tight throat for high notes. Also, some of you might not have a tight throat, but you might lift your shoulders. You might hold tight your upper torso. Remember what we were talking about with the um, support in the beginning that I'm on the 16th floor. If we put the support up here, I topple over. If we try to support everything up here, we will be jammed. We could get tired in our throat. We could even hurt the vocal cords because they'll rub together. Then you get nodes and then there's this whole thing. Okay. So how? what's a good way to, to get out of that? What I say, okay, off topic, just having hearing Sierra for the first time and getting, yeah, she's getting married to him. Yeah, she she sings wishing like nobody. She's incredible. It's because she connects her true acting, which we're gonna we're gonna put together with this. Okay, so let's talk about this first. 
All right, so we've got the, I'm looking for the revolutionary send. So we've got the revolutionary send elements, right? Let's take a look at our list. If you have the book open to one of the pages that has the revolutionary send elements, here it is in the introduction. So what we've done so far today, we've done the breath, the support, and the resonance. Now we're going to go to, uh, to floors and pyramid. We've already talked about the floors going up the scale. We're going up the floors. We've talked about the pyramid. The space is going to feel smaller. Let's add as we do this personalization and fourth wall. Okay, so what do we do with that? Oh, no, you're not, you're not difficult. What's happening? Roger, wait, I'm not trying to be difficult. What's the difference between support and airflow? Oh, you're not difficult, Roger. You're amazing. Okay, so I don't use the word airflow. Can we just forget about the word airflow? Airflow, I'm assuming, is like, What's coming out of your mouth? I don't think about what's coming out of my mouth. I don't think about, or maybe it, you're saying it's about this. I would I'd focus in on the pressure of the support. So airflow, I don't know what airflow means. I don't use that word. I, of course, I know what it means, but I don't, I don't know how, how to use that in a technique. What we're using instead is pressure. So, to do these high notes, we're, we're on the same page now. We're moving up. This is a great question for where we're going. Yeah, I don't think about airflow, right. So what I think about is the pressure of the sensation of the support. That's what I'm going to next. So your, your question is right on time. So belly button down is support. When we sing a higher note, we need more energy of the, of the support. So the balls are going to spin faster. This is about air pressure. We're not going to think about airflow. Just think about the pressure. So meaning the belly button moving in and think about how those balls are spinning around each other. So let's do that together. You're going to guide your voice straight up the front passage. Let's do that together. S. You're going to go into your legs on the high note. Y. We're training the voice that we need more energy of support. So just doing a knee bend gives you more energy of support. And you don't really have to think about it. And we're going to remember that it's going to go a little smaller. So do this with your hands. And we're going to nod yes with our, with our head. Why? I don't want you to have any tension in your neck. So S, S. And if you can't do the lip trill, you can push up your lips. Or you can try a tongue trill. Either one of those you can do. If you can't do any of that, try a hum. Okay, here we go. S, S breath. Good. Again, S, S breath. Now, I'm going to do one where I dive to the floor. We do this in the exercises in the book. So I can do an S. I'm going to bend my knees. Notice I'm diving on the high note. Why? I don't want any energy here, any tension here to be involved. So I'm diving and I'm bending my knees because that gives me more support and my belly button's moving in. And when I go down, I'm literally surrendering my head. Now, my lips stopped. That means I didn't quite have the energy of sending. That time I remembered and my lips kept going. Okay, that's a lot of information. Notice I didn't say airflow. I, I, don't, know, I don't know how to talk about airflow. There's airflow, but we're not focusing on airflow. We're focusing on the energy of our support. And we're descending to our person on our fourth wall. So think about somebody you'd love to see today. In fact, you miss them very much. This is what Andrew did with his kids. He put, he said, okay, on your fourth wall, let's put somebody in your life that you miss very much. So in the book, I always use my father because he's passed away and he was my first, 
voice teacher kind of at three years old. The audio book, you can hear the real audio of me singing with my dad when I was three years old. Like it's the real audio. So, so I, I, he was, he was one of my heroes, you know? So I'll use him. He's somebody I miss. He's around all the time, but you know, <laughs> I can tell he's nearby, but I'll put him on my fourth wall and I'll send it to, I mean, what you did, Andrew, I just, I can't even, I can't even, I, I just can't wait to witness it. You, you changed my life with your, with your story. I just think it's so cool. Oh, Roger, you got it. Yes, it's the belly. It's the belly button. Now, don't think belly up here. You know what I mean? It's very specific. It's underneath. These abs around the diaphragm are free. We're not clutching them. We don't use the word clutch. We're letting that, we're scooping, we're sending, we're swinging it in. And I tell you, if you have the book, go through that chapter and read each line until you get it. And I'm here. You can write me. You can ask me. I don't think there's one person I haven't responded to. You can really respond. I can. I will promise to respond to tell you what's um, uh, to answer your question as well as I can. Oh, oh, thank you, Andrew. Yeah, well, <laughs> your kids were adorable too, but it really is adorable of, of, of me singing at three, right? Oh, yeah, you've got the audiobook. Thank you. Okay, now I get it. Oh, my God, honey. Isn't that fun? Oh my God. And my dad taught me to belt it out. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm always trying to get back to the three-year-old. Okay. Cameron, late, but you're here. Awesome. Oh, miss you too, honey. Thank, so glad you're here. And you can always go back and listen to the beginning later if you want. Okay. So let's dive. <laughs> So we're going to put pitch on that. If you want to push up, that's fine. Do an S. S now, because we're together, I don't do this in the book, but I'm going to do it with you. We're going to do a full octave. So what that means is we're going up the floors of the front passage. We're going up the scale. And we're going to go smaller instead of, and these are just thoughts. It's not like we, we, you know, I can't, I can touch my piano. I can't do that here. It's just, we're just thinking it and we're guiding it with the belly button leads the tone. If you write anything down today, that is a good one. The support of the belly button moving in is leading the tone, kind of like the motor of a boat is pushing the boat forward. <laughs> so I'm not leading here. Ah, yeah. So let's just do one of those. S, S breath. Now see your person on the fourth wall. What's their strongest human quality? What's their strongest physical feature? That would be my dad's face. What's your person's strongest human quality? My dad, he has so many great ones. I would say he's a genius. He was a genius. And so it's like, hi, dad. And it's like, I'm just sending this off to him. That will be your airflow, okay? <laughs> We're not going to use the word airflow. We're using the word sending it off to him. That will take care of the airflow. I think airflow suggests this is Juan Luis to push more air out, which is not what we want. Bravo. That's why I don't like the word. Support and energy is about the spinning of the balls. I like to think of it as starting up a motorcycle vroom vroom. I'm with you, honey. I say like when we start the S, S. It's like, I say the same as you, starting a car. Like we have to, an engine, like get it going. And then it keeps rumbling, it keeps moving. And then we'll use the fourth wall and the personalization as the sending. I've never had the question about airflow in my life. So this is really interesting, but 
what I'm saying is let's use the fourth wall and the personalization and you send into your person that will take care of the airflow. So if your teacher says airflow, that means you have to get into your personalization. You have to see your person who you miss on your fourth wall. That's just our default. You know, maybe it's different with a different um, song. We have different needs and all that, but that's our just, that's a good one to use every day just to, just to start practicing and then we'll send to them. And if you're not sending, you know, if you're thinking of your voice and going, me, me, ma, then your voice isn't in the room and you're not sending it um, and you don't have airflow. So I guess, I don't know. Yes, the motor. Good. Now, the reason I'm going, I, I have something to share with you that I saw on a plane once. I was watching the TV on a long flight and there was a concert about U2, the, the group U2 and Bono. Bono had his microphone. I, I'm looking for the link. I can't find it. But in this particular concert that they had on the airplane, so it was probably an HBO concert or on one of the, you know, one of those platforms, Bono sang a whole song like this. He sang the whole song with his microphone here. Hey, what are you doing? He was singing the whole song upside down. And I knew very well, he had a voice teacher that said, you got tension here, man. You got to get rid of that tension. Release your head and go down. So I would say to Lewis, who wrote me about this tension in his throat, or any of you who feel this tension up here, like, you know, holding the world on your shoulders, to surrender over and give, let the support do the work and talk to these muscles and say, guys, you don't have to hold anymore. Now, Bono is Bono. He knew he could sing a whole song like this and his audience would love it. I mean, he didn't apologize. He didn't say why. He just hung down and sung his whole song like this. He was in his legs. I saw a super belly button moving and he was completely surrendered. So let's sing happy, happy birthday like that. But we're going to do a little warm up before that. Okay. So we just did the lip trill. Let's do that going over. See your person. S. New breath. You're going to dive like Bono. S. Breathe. Doing this just to remind myself that it's going more narrow. Bella Thorne called it a pointy head. I love that. I was like, pointy head, what a great idea. <laughs> it's so helpful because we all have to have the technique. We're singing with physics. So cool. S, S breath. Remember, it's going up the floors. One more, S. Now let's go all the way down. And stay there and keep sending on the higher note in the smaller space, wiggle your head. We're training these muscles not to hold. Don't hold your throat tight, Luis, Lewis. You're not holding your throat. You're just telling your throat you can relax now. There's a time I use the word relax, but this is for Luis. If you don't have this problem, don't worry about it. We don't want to worry about stuff that we don't have to worry about. We want to just hone everything economically. Good. Now we're going to throw the ball. Now this might be too low for the men. Let's, this is for the ladies, S. Let me hear the ladies, S. S. Now you're gonna have happy here. No, let's do this first. Happy birthday. Now I explain in the book that the word, the word birthday and the R, we don't say birthday, we use what's called a schwa, which is like 
being very English. Happy birthday. Say that to me. Happy birthday. And you can be kind of like a bird with your mouth. Happy birthday. A little vertical pucker. Happy birthday. That's just to get the vowel nice and vertical. Happy birthday. Not happy birthday. It's really important for us Americans not to sing er. And also for anybody else who's trying to, you know, speak in, with an American accent, don't sing the R's. It, it, um, it hurts your voice. Okay, so S. So I'm going to throw the ball to you. You catch this and then throw it back to me. Happy birthday. Two floors. Throw it to me. Happy birthday. Good. Here it comes. I'm throwing it to you, S. Catch it. Happy birthday. Throw it back to me, M. Happy birthday. Good. Now we're doing two more floors as we're slowly going up. So we're going up these floors. Birthday is going to start getting smaller and smaller. Birth, a birthday is going to get smaller and smaller. Here we go, S. S breath. Happy birthday. Throw it to me. Happy birthday. Sorry, I forgot the S. I'll do it now. I sing to you. Happy birthday. Now, it's going to be a smaller, tighter space up there. So let birth be in a more narrow place. More energy of support. Do an S. S happy. There you go. Sing to me. Happy birthday. Good. One more. Throwing you the ball. S happy birthday. Throw it to me. S. Happy birthday. Now make it more narrow. Both men and women, we want it to be more narrow on birth. Happy birthday. Send it to me. Happy birthday. Now the high note, that's going to be our octave leap. Sing this for me. Happy birthday. It's in the small space. Sing it right there. Happy birthday. Now let's do the low one around our mouth. Happy birthday. Good. Now we're going to do the octave leap. Breathe. S. And happy birthday. Again, send to me. Happy birthday. Now listen to me. Happy birthday, dear daddy. You can put your person's name in. Here we go, S. Send to me. Happy birthday, dear. Excellent. Good, good, good. We're going to finish up now. Oh, you got to go. So much gratitude. Thank you. I'm so happy you gave, came. It's like your send technique is freeing the spirit. Oh, Megan, that is so cool. Thank you, honey. Okay, we're going to finish up now with happy birthday, and then I'll send you on your way. Oh, thank you, Ron. I'm so, so thrilled. Let's now, I've got this set up. We're going to just sing happy birthday. We're going to put your person on the fourth wall, the person you miss so much. Let's do an S. Let's do the octave leap. So S, happy birthday. Now, I, I'm sorry, I... I Faked you out. Let's do the dive like, like Bono. Happy birthday, dear daddy. Just stay down. Don't have your head like this. Have your head like this. Do it again. Happy birthday, dear daddy. I'm hoping that this will help Lewis get out of his throat for the high notes. He can just sing upside down. You can also have a chair put the, and put your head like this. Gravity helps. It helps to really surrender and train these muscles to get out of that mapping of holding and surrendering. Okay, I'm turning this on. We're going to sing happy birthday a bunch of times, okay? Here it comes. Oh, shit. Sorry.
sorry. <laughs> Here it comes. See a person? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Octave? Happy birthday, dear daddy. Happy birthday to you. Breathe. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Octave? Happy birthday, dear daddy. Happy birthday to you. Here we go, dance it out. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, throw the ball. Happy birthday, dear daddy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Use your head. Happy birthday. Got your belly button still. Happy birthday, dear daddy. Happy birthday to you. Last time. No, it's over. Hey. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, dancing around is a good thing. Why? Because you are releasing here and you're still connected to your support. Oh, shoot. Mamma Mia, I love it. Okay, final questions, wrapping up. Let's have some water. Oh my God, this was more fun than I expected. You guys are so cool. Thank you for spending almost two hours with me. I was just gonna do these like one hour things. We'll make them a little longer if you guys can stay. You know, if you can stay, we'll definitely do longer. And I mean, only a few of you had to go, so I'm so honored and so thrilled. Let's give you the the question that I ask in the book a lot, which is, what are you aware of? This is a really incredible question that Susan Batson would ask me all the time. In every class, you're asked, what are you aware of? And it's so important to, to figure out what's going on and get aware of your yourself and your own body, all those good things. So Andrew, I'm so glad, Andrew, you were able to jump on because I thought you were Maybe you're on Easter break still or, or um, Passover break, holiday break. Wonderful. I'm so glad that you got to join. Oh, that's right, because you're on break. So thank you for joining live. I love it. Hi, Juan Luis. So you can get my book if you're interested on Amazon worldwide, wherever you are in the world, go to your Amazon. You can put in Sing, Find Your True Voice. You can also put in my name and it should come up. I think worldwide, you can also get the audio book um, and hopefully you can get all, I don't know if you can get every single version. Hopefully you can, certainly in the US you can. Uh, let me hear your, what are you aware of? Uh, Delia, that was fun. Oh, that, that makes me happy because singing is about having a blast. Um, such a simple but festive song and you dance too. Good. Yeah, I know. It's the song I use in the book just because it's so intense, every layer. Every layer is really important. So to have a song that actually has range because it has that octave leap, which we deal with all the time, um, it's, it's, it's quite helpful. So my hope, hope is using that as a blueprint you can take all that work and bring it to your own songs. And there's going to be a volume two, which is quite um, advanced, but this is for everybody, everybody. And you have to read volume one. You can't read volume two without volume one. Okay, uh, Juan Luis, I love being here today. Oh, I, I, just, I just admire you so much, Juan Luis. I just think you're so cool. I'm aware of the vocal workout you got today. Awesome, awesome. And just give it to yourself, honey. Just sing a little bit every day if you haven't been. And, you'll be in super voice within 24 hours. Okay, there's Roger. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed that. Thank you, honey. I, I just, I, you know, I'm, I'm positive, but I tell the truth, you know? So I, I want you guys to really have the truth. Yay, you're dancing around your office. <laughs> Great, Roger. Roseanne, is the audiobook also on Amazon? Yeah, absolutely. It's on what they call Audible. And I think if you join Audible, they give you a bunch of free um, books, so uh, so you can get this for free. You know, if you're if you're somebody who likes to read book, I mean, listen to books, it could be a great deal for you. Otherwise, I think it costs like eighteen dollars, seventeen dollars um, for the audiobook. But yeah, it's right there um, on my account there. 
Thank you, Roseanne. I'm so happy you love the book, honey. I'd love your feedback. If you guys are loving it, please go give it a five star review. If you can, you can write a review just because it helps the algorithm um, with my book. So, so others can, can learn about it. Uh, Andrew was so kind uh, to not only do a review, but he reached out to his, his fellow teachers and said, you know, get this for your classrooms, which I'm excited about. I just love sharing the work. Uh, great, Emma, sing more. Yeah, just do a little bit every day. You know, my schedule is so, so uh, busy. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm teaching people how to sing, but I got to warm up too, you know? I, I don't want you to think about your throat, but it is a muscle. So we have to, you know, keep in that, keep in the mapping, the good mapping of belly button support, releasing up here. I'll share with you my own exercises I do beyond the ones that are in the book. The book ones are, are really helpful. Um, uh, Lynn, you're aware of your front passage and super belly button. Oh, I love you, goddess Lynn. You are, uh, you are so amazing. You've been on a stage like every year. You're always on a stage. Um, and now you're, you're doing Julia Child. She does this, Lynn Moulton does Julia Child. Oh my God, she is so brilliant. So I'm just so honored to be a part of your journey, honey, because you're one of those amazing actors and singers who needs to be seen. So I'm so happy that it's, that it's part of your arsenal, you know, keep you in good shape. Hiccups and throat tightness tell me that my body's connection needs to be evaluated and attended to. Okay, I, you know what, Chicane, you guys who have my book, chapter 12, and you really only have to read up through chapter three to do this exercise. Chapter 12 is what's called the healing vocal exercise. This is a remarkable exercise that uses the S's, the tongue trill, either voiced or unvoiced, lip trills. And I, I lead you through it. And it is so good if you feel like you want to get the connection or if you feel like you've been vocally tired. It is magic. It comes from this doctor in the UK, uh, Dr. Ruth Epstein. And I was able to kind of hone the exercise as it's really worked for my students. Carrie Washington loves this exercise. Um, I've used it for several for several uh, students, but especially her when she was doing eight shows a week, it was such a good exercise to go to. So give that a try, honey. Um, Andrew is aware that when you work with me, you can actually feel your heart. Wow, what that's telling me too, honey, is I heard that if we focus on our heart for a moment, it brings down our blood pressure. Again, it gets us out of the analytical mind and puts us into the creative part of our mind. That's what sensory condition does. That's another great chapter. Oh my God, I have so many to, well, we got four Wednesdays, so we got three more to go. But is so if, let's all focus on our heart for a moment. We've all just dropped our blood pressure. Yeah, wonderful, I love it. Okay, and there's Miriam. Thank you so much for setting these April Wednesday lives. Oh, honey, I'm so thrilled. And I promise I will focus, I will get back to Phantom and your question. It's a really good one, but it was a little too further along than I wanted to do today. So um, we'll do that next time, I promise. I'll put that in my notes today. Cameron, just so happy to hear my voice again. Oh, honey, get my audiobook and I'll be with you. It's my voice. Uh, I'm, I really worked with my team in Los Angeles. The team was incredible. Uh, it was a, a, a dear, dear friend from college. His name, Rob Miller, who, uh, is the pianist. He plays the piano there. We all went, we went to Stanford together and he's also a great writer. So he had, we had some last minute edits we did of the book together. Incredible. Um, my director, Terry Wallman, was amazing. And the studio is called Private Island Audio. Michael McDonald, who I worked with 20 years ago on my own CD, he was my engineer. Uh, so we worked, and then Sean did some extra work as an engineer. I didn't even use their programs. I had things manually cleaned so you could really get my vibrant voice. So I'm just really thrilled. Okay. <laughs> you're getting my book today. Oh, you're the sweetest. It's so dry in here suddenly. Ah, 
Okay. I usually have my humidifier going, but let's see. Hold on. <coughs> I carry around this meter with me that tells us the how hot it is and also the humidity. It's 40, 47. Well, it's going up because I'm holding it. It was at over 50 and it was nice and juicy in here. Now it's dry and I've been beginning to cough. So just know, use your humidifiers, okay? It's really important. All right, Joy. Going to work weight free. Yes, you feel lighter. Oh, that's great. The body and voice are liberating. I'm so thankful. Have Italy journey full of success. Thank you, Joy. Good. I'm, I'm going to Italy like May 1st, but I'm here every Wednesday in April. So I'll see you next time. Okay. And be sure to share if you want. That would be awesome. Also follow me on Instagram and Facebook, both my official. You can follow me on my regular and my official. Maris Attraction official or Maris Attraction. I'm also on Twitter. That's more of a political platform, but I'm there sharing the work. So uh, come be with me. I can't wait. And thank you for being here today. You just, uh, I'm just so thrilled. Okay, guys, see you next time. Okay. Lots of love. 12 noon next Wednesday, number, uh, episode number two. We'll talk more about the book. You guys are getting the book. Write down your questions if you have any. See you then. Ciao for now.